from the Sky Satellite Network, this is Sky Sports. Hello and a very good evening to you. Welcome to this ice hockey coming to you live from Edinburgh. It's the second leg of the second semi-final in the Benson Hesage Cup. It's the match between the Nottingham Panthers and the Edinburgh Racers. If you weren't with us last night, you won't know then that Edinburgh have currently got a deficit of 19-2 to try and overcome. With me is Rocky Saganuk, the former Edinburgh coach. And Rocky, a lot of professional pride really here at stake for these guys tonight. Absolutely. Uh, you, know, you have on the Edinburgh side, you have a team here that's been together for a long time. They have a lot of veterans on this team and to get their butts kicked last night has got to hurt them a bit. But they're going to come home here tonight. They're going to make it a very good game. They're not worried about last night's result. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big, big hill for them to climb. They want to go out and show tonight that they still have the capability of winning. And 24 hours on now and we've, we've, we've got over the shock of last night. But can you still believe what you saw in that second period? Ten goals without re re reply. Well, again, you know, with any other team uh, in, in British ice hockey, I probably wouldn't be all that surprised. But with the Edinburgh team, as I say, with, the, with uh, all that uh, talent that they have and, and uh, the leadership on this team, they just fell apart. On the other hand, Nottingham, I've never seen them play so good. They were definitely on form. If they can keep that up for 30, 35 games throughout the year, they'll definitely be one of the guys going for honours at the end of the season. Thanks, Rocky. More from you a little later. Certainly was a great night for Nottingham last night. And for one man in particular, Simon Hunt, it was a night he'll never forget. Racers trying to get it out of the zone. 80 goes out right in front. Hunt goes out. She scores! Simon Hunt rolls in unmolested. Everyone was on the far side of the ring. Face off deep in Racers territory. In the first period, Maury Hansen, the goaltender, faced 21 shots. Butler at the other end faced only 11. Hunt gets another chance. Or books in, scores. Boy, that didn't take long. Hunt gets a power play goal with just five seconds gone on the penalty to where somebody's got to talk to this guy. All the way down the ice, and Hunt picks it up. Can he come in from a sharp angle? Hansen, another shot, scores. Hansen went down. Remaining on this period, Moransky puts the check on Waghorn. Lambert throws it out front. Good play by Lambert. Oh, good vision there. As Hunt comes up with yet another big goal. And the Blaisdell. Blaisdell takes the shot back at the back. One timer fans on it. Who's puck right there? Full tenor goes down, but can't stop Hunt. Hunt was all alone. Goaltender made the first move. Another power play goal, and Palmer steps on the ice for Edinburgh. And here comes Hunt. Hunt lets the shot go. Big goal, big shot. With one minute and 12 seconds remaining on the game. No let up in the pressure from the Panthers. They're humiliating the racers. That's all, I don't know, I just got a lucky stick, I guess. What made it so easy for you to score six goals against them last night? I don't know, wherever I seemed to be, there was just plenty of time. I think I was only rushed on one of the goals. So wherever I stood on the ice, I had loads of time and tried to put hooking back in the net. What's the idea tonight? Is it going to be a defensive game or are you going to try and score again? Well, we caught, may as well go with the idea of carry on going like we have been doing. You know, if we try and change the game plan, it could alter our style of play altogether. So we we'll just go at them, like we did last night. Well, we we certainly never expected to come up here with such a nice uh, cushion, and uh, you know we're very we're very pleased about what happened last night. But then again, we have we have a job to do tonight as well, and so uh, we're looking to just win the game tonight. That's our goal tonight. We're not trying to run up a score. We're just going to try to win this hockey game. Tonight. Do you think it might be a more defensive match tonight then? 
no, I think Murrayfield will try to open it up and and really go hard at us. And so uh, I think it could be some exciting hockey. It could be end to end hockey. We're going to try to play obviously tight defensive because we do have a lead to protect. But our, our team plays well on the road, and uh, we're going to go after some goals as well. So we're hoping it's an entertaining match. So a very good Saturday for Mike Blaisdell. I wonder how Sunday will turn out for him. Rocky, one negative point really about last night was that uh, unfortunate punch-up we had in the second period, which went on for something like eight minutes in the end before play restarted. Right. Well, um, you know, Edinburgh really can't afford that sort of lack of concentration tonight. No, you know, and we're talking about the punch-up, like, there was no punches really thrown either. That's the big thing. Once we see it on replay here, uh, you know, we'll watch here. That there's not really a lot of punches thrown. Mike Ware knocks down Simon Hunt there, and then a little bit of uh, guys just grabbing onto each other. But what happens here is when you get 12 guys bunched up, you'll see, you know, feet getting away and sticks getting away, and guys fall down like that. And now uh, somebody comes in to help. The referees get in there. Another guy comes, yeah, you stay away from my man, and somebody else, and everything yeah. just happens. But if you look at it, really not a real, not one punch was really thrown. And uh, unfortunately, it just took a long time for Kempers to come get control of it. But nevertheless, it's not good for the image of the sport. I mean, Absolutely. people like some physical contact, sure, but not to that extent. No, I mean, that's what uh, we're not trying to promote in the sport. We are promoting a very fast game, a lot of intensity out there. The fans are close to the action. They can feel the hits. They can see the hits happening uh, really quick. We want it to be a fast, exciting family sport. Stuff like that does happen. It happens in North America where they play at, at, at its top level. It happens all over where you play ice hockey. We just don't want it to be no. overexpanded. So we're looking forward to a good, clean match tonight. Plenty of goals. Absolutely. We're looking for a lot of goals on both teams tonight. Excellent. Tonight's the game we're going to work on tonight, aren't we? You know, what's happened has happened. We want a good game out of the two teams tonight for the fans that are watching it. Fine. Well, we'll take a short break there. Don't forget to join us in a couple of minutes from now for Ice Hockey Live from Edinburgh. You're watching Sky Sports. Welcome back to Edinburgh and the ice hockey tonight from Murrayfield. These young fans, their team may well be up against it out there on the ice, but they're certainly enjoying themselves. We hope that you will too. We've got lots of good action coming your way. With me is Rocky Saganuk to assess the action, but uh, just before we go to Rocky, let's uh, have a quick look at the way the two teams line up for tonight's fixture. Uh, Rocky, start with Edinburgh, please. Well, the biggest difference in Edinburgh tonight is they've lost Mike Ware uh, to the suspension from, from last night's altercation. He can't play in tonight's game, so they put in number four, uh, Marco Pinenman. Pinamini. Okay, and uh, Nottingham? Nottingham, well, everybody's the same as last night, including that old workhorse out there, their uh, coach and uh, leader, Mike Blaisdell. Fine, well, we're going to talk about him in a little uh, more detail in just a moment. But first of all, there, of course, has been some action in the first period here. We're about to go with the second period. Let's take a look at the highlights now of that first session. Commentary from Gary Moran and Paul Ferguson. Edmiston with a bit of room on the... Far side, Edmiston runs into trouble. Trickett ties him up. Taylor goes in to help out. Tony Hand, good pass over to Plews. Wind up, shot, bounces in front. Hand is there to collect and put it over the red line. That's goal number one. A rebound turned in by the captain of the racers, Tony Hand, to thrill the home fans. And it was that 16-year-old, Scott Plews from Kakodi, who fired one in. From the blue line, no assist given officially because of the rebound, but this is Blues with the big slap shot. Stephen Butler gets hold of that one but can't hang on to it. And the rebound's there for Tony Hand. Taylor wants it over here, but they go into the far corner to Brabant. Brabant back to Premack, shot. Oh, that was so easy. Good save by Hansen. But Hunt continues his scoring spree out there to make it one for the Nottingham Panthers. He cleaned up last night and he looks like he's on his way again tonight. Popping up very much in front of the goal. Simon Hunt, number 13 of the Nottingham Panthers, definitely got the goal. It's a long range effort from Garth Premack, the 26 year old, a pad save by Hansen. And then as he did so often last night, Hunt puts it away. Has it deflected to him. He's got 80 and he's got Waghorn, a one-time shot, the rebound! 80 is there, Waghorn, Lambert and 80 combining nicely. We've had three goals in this period and three rebounds off the keepers have led to those goals. Lambert and Waghorn combining, big blast and 80 pounces on the crumbs. Lambert takes the puck over the blue line, drops it off for the big defenseman, the GB International, and it's 80 who mops up the crumbs. Nice pass over to Brabant. Blaisdell is working up center as Hunt now moves into the slot. A 2 on one situation as Machulik has it. Right down the ice, Machulik goes in, takes a shot, finds the five hole. Machulik may 
makes it two for the racers. Nottingham cough up the puck in race's end, and they pay Dealey for it. A two-on-one breakaway. Chuck Taylor can't catch the play. Simon Hunt gave the puck away, but Tulik takes it all the way to Butler and through the five hole. Winston couldn't get the stick on the bouncing puck as we come down to the final seven seconds. Oh, big shot by Blaisdell off the pad, off the post, into the net. Well, I was joking with Blaisdell before the game, kidding about last night's scoreline, saying that just about everybody scored but him. And now he makes me eat my words. Off the right wing, a beautiful shot from the player coach, his first goal of the cup. Yes, a great score there for Mike Blaisdell, and really things going so well for Nottingham. And you said he's the old warhorse, but he's having a terrific weekend, isn't he? Well, I'll tell you, he may be the old warhorse, but a shot like that, he's still got the eye of an eagle out there. And, you know, that's a patented shot by Mike. He's, uh, he's done that all his professional career. Here it is. He's come hard up the right wing, and Ricky Brabant just lays a nice pass onto his stick. And Mike scored probably 100 goals like this in the National Hockey League up in Canada, and he just right off the inside post. Great shot. We mentioned last night there was a risk, perhaps, as a player coach, that, you know, things can go against you because you can't keep a, a, a close eye on what's happening tactically if you're out there on the ice. Absolutely, especially in the Premier League here. Uh, you need to be concentrating on your team. You need to be concentrating on the other team of what's happening, how they're playing against you with tactics. And to do it on the ice is really tough. He's got a heck of a hockey team out there to help work with it. As long as they're playing their game, they're going to be successful, he feels. It's only going to be another week or so, though, and he'll be back behind the bench soon enough. Thanks, Rocky, for that. So, things looking pretty good for Nottingham. They lead 3-2 at the end of that first period. We're back with the whole of the second period live in a couple of minutes from now. You're watching Sky Sports. Welcome back to Edinburgh for the second leg of the Spencer and Hedges Cup semi-final between the Edinburgh Racers and the Nottingham Panthers. Things are looking pretty good for the Panthers at the moment. Let's start this second session now. Commentary from Gary Moran and Paul Ferguson. The referee is Alec McWilliam. Alan Craig and Andrew Duncan are the linesmen. The racers who trail by one are playing from left to right. Tony Han loses out on the... Opening face-off to Brabant. It really has been a good first period. We've seen lots of excellent goaltending, some good playmaking from the racers. They're looking relaxed, they're looking fit, but then again, after 20 minutes of hockey, I said that last night, and in the second period, they conceded 10 goals. Michulik works his way around, tries to get it out front to Palmer. Michulik behind the net, loses to Waghorn and Premack. Hunt gets it up, and here come the Panthers, 80. Skating hard, over to Hunt. The back, lets a shot go, right in front. Hunt on the backhand, and Moray Hansen goes down to make a couple of big saves in the opening few seconds of this second period. Tony Han, rink-wide pass. Han looking for the return pass from Michulik. That didn't happen, but Michulik steals it. Now he gives it to Han. Han passes, deflected, and it comes right back to him. Michulik and Han working hard in the corner. And Hand comes out nicely, takes the shot as Paul Bly, the new goaltender in this hockey game for the Panthers, gets his first touch. Bly is spelled B-L-A-H-Y-J. You work it out. That's what he told me before the game. But the youngster seeing action here in this second leg as Tony Hand puts it into the corner. Palmer is there. Edmiston is waiting out front. Pushed along the boards and the Panthers with Tate flipping it up on the wing shot right on the target and Hansen is hurt Blaisdell let the rocket go and Moray Hansen went down quickly just before the end of the period we saw Blaisdell in a similar position score a goal from a rocket a shot that one was just as hard super cannon of a shot from Blaisdell this time it doesn't hit the back of the net it hits Hansen I think on the inside of the pad on the left leg Low down, certainly, and Hansen went down like a sack of potatoes, and they were immediately calling the medics onto the ice. Mike Glazedale, 10 years in the NHL. You don't get to play up there unless you can shoot the puck. He does have a great shot, and he goes right over to talk to Hansen to see if he's all right. Hansen is uh, quite a fighter, 30 years old, and I'm sure if he can, he'll stay in the game. If not, he'll go out for as long as it takes, and then again, if he can, he'll come back in. That's what they can do with goaltenders. Catch him up and put him back in. But you can see now as we come back 
why if he's limping, but uh, it looks like he's going to stay out there. Corey Hansen, who came out of the game last night as the racers started to fall apart, has been looking very solid in this one so far. Very much a better game from Maury Hansen. There were 20 shots in the second period last night and the racers let 10 goals in, but they weren't all down to Hansen. First period tonight, Hansen faced 11 shots. Face off at the top of the circle. A chance now for Blaisdell. The shot is deflected wide. Blaisdell having a good game. Player coach showing some great speed and puck control as that goes into the corner now. Pentland gets it back. Trickett lets the shot go. That's upstairs. Blaisdell from close in. Trickles through the crease in the far corner. Penalty coming up. McWilliam looking for one apiece out there. Alex says, called a fair game so far. He likes to clamp on things before they get started. He's saying, hey, get off the ice. Lambert and Edmiston drawing the penalties for interference and unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, actually, Lambert's gone for the high sticking penalty, I think. But um, roughing the call in the end, he changed it three different ways there. Every which way, but the bottom line is two minutes each, sit down there and do as you're told. And as you say, Paul, Edmiston was reluctant to go to the box, and the referee told him in no uncertain terms to go and have a rest. Ross Lambert, the playmaker on the team. 30 assists going into last night's game. Lambert picked up one and a goal, so he's got six goals and 31 assists in this competition so far. And he's the guy who sets things up. He's the one who doesn't get the credit for the big goals, but when that puck comes out of the corner, he's usually the one feeding it out. The coach's dream, the kind of guy who just puts his head down and never says, says die out there, continues to work from beginning to end. Taylor takes it slowly behind the goal. Taylor has looked sharp as well. I know a lot of people in the press thought that Taylor, after so many years in the first division, wouldn't be able to cut it in the premier division, but he looks good. Pentland with time, lets the shot go. The deflection by Machulik just missed the target. Trickett unable to get onto that. Machulik has it now. Machulik playing a little cat and mouse, gets it back to Tony Hand over to the far side. Pentland couldn't control the bouncing puck. Palmer wants it, Taylor tips it away. Up to Blaisdell, Blaisdell to Brabant, but Hand is there, almost stolen. And that bounces nicely for Pentland. Pentland winds up again, goes for the far corner. Palmer off the plexi and Pentland finds himself in unfamiliar territory out there. Takes a knock, that comes back to Hand. Quick thinking from Hand, over the far side. Goaltender down, save is there, Matulik. Right in the crease and here goes Pentland. And this is a repeat of last night. Body of young defenseman Matt Trickett undid the face case, pulled it out of the way, said, do you want to go? And Pentland said, yes. I bet he wishes now he had Pentland and Trickett, a couple of defensemen squaring off in front of that net. And who says you don't have to take your clothes off to have a good time? <laughs> Matt Trickett, a forward that's dropped back onto defence and he looks after his teammates. Paul Pentland there, a defenceman up front in unfamiliar territory. Got in each other's way as they were trying to sort out the crease area in front of the young netminder Paul Bly. Two plus two minute penalties, four minutes per side for roughing. Let's look at this again. You can see at the right-hand side of your screen, it started a lot of pushing and shoving. Both players with their sticks up, the elbows up. The save is made, but meanwhile, two plus twos are being handed out by the official. And that's a good call by McWilliam, the referee from air. A lot of referees would send those guys to the showers, but he knows the game is early in its early stages. Let them play a bit. It wasn't that serious. It also came out of the fact that we were on a spell of four on four as well, and that was faster hockey. The, the, the speed of the game had stepped up a gear as well, and four on four in this rink, one of the biggest rinks in the country, means a lot more than it does in the tiny rinks. There was a nowhere to hide out there. Well, you've got good players for both teams out there with speed. You've got 80, you've got Hunt, you've got Tony Hand, Michulik. Let's see what happens. Premack. Big defenseman brings it up on the right side. Played for the Canadian Olympic team for a while. He's got a good shot from 
just inside the blue. Primack tries to feed it through, but Niemi grabs him in the corner. The Finn with about 13 letters in his name picks up the puck again and starts to work it up on the right side. Marco, the flying Finn, drops it back and the racers decide to go deep and start it up again. Clues. Clues, no support at all. Puts that to fly doorstep as Edmiston steps back on the ice. Lambert is there. And we have a five on five situation because of the coincidental penalties. 80 has a chance. Hansen is there, no steam on the shot, but uh, that was left at 80 stick. No one seemed to want it. Well, they're squaring up again around the net as we take another look at AD snapshot, which Maury Hansen gets the stick on and covers up. Bellingham Panthers are expecting a physical approach from the Edinburgh Racers in this second leg. And when they heard that Mike Ware's penalty points had totted up and he was suspended, they thought it wouldn't be that way. But at the moment, it's building up nicely that way. It's, it's not chippy, it's just intense at the moment. It's getting a little more intense. There's Mike Ware sitting in the crowd watching this one. Boy, I bet he wishes he was out there on the ice doing the job. Well, I don't know. He looks pretty comfortable where he is. Palmer picks it up. <laughs> and works it down on the right side to Tony Han. Han tries to get it back. Some good stuff from the racers as Matunik got it back. Shot coming in from Han, wide of the target. Back to Plews. His shot is blocked by Brabant. And Plews took out Brabant nicely. Brabant was uh, moving forward. That's stolen. Here comes Brabant. His pass over is tipped down by the Finns. An excellent hockey by both teams as they play good offensive and defensive hockey in this second period. Up on the wing, a two-on-two -two situation now as Palmer has the puck on the right wing. Palmer throws it across the goal. There's going to be a penalty on the plate. Nottingham Panthers will have someone in the penalty box as Tony Hand picks himself up. It was a terrific call behind the play of Rick Brabant, who took down Tony Hand. And 93 of the Panthers, Rick Brabant takes two minutes for tripping. So the racers go back to the power play, and with that open ice, they'll enjoy it. Hey, I know one person that wishes Mike Ware was playing in this game. I give up who? You, because Ware is a lot easier to say than Piano Nimini. <laughs> We had lessons in Finnish before the game. It still doesn't work on this guy's name. I've been pronouncing Finnish names for years, and this guy has one heck of a name. Shot comes in. Bly went down, but Palmer's shot was stopped. Blaisdell, with a lot of time, goes for a skate on the far side of the rink. Perhaps one too many moves. He's brought down. The racers can't take it in because Machulik is stranded on the wrong side of the blue line. Edmiston back to hand. The shadow coming from Blaisdell. Blaisdell, 34 years old, out there killing off penalties. Edmiston taps it to the far side of the rink. Hand wants it right at the top, doesn't get it. Now he gets it, but the racers have to come out of the attacking zone. Good pass. Edmiston with a lot of time. Why doesn't he let the shot go? The pass over to Achulik was telegraphed, and Waghorn flips it down the ice. Edmiston really has to get a little more confidence to let those shots go. He's done that a couple of times tonight. And when he's been in a position to shoot, he's passed and lost out completely. Hand took it the length of the ice, and he too loses out. Pianini Niemi gets it up to Palmer. Palmer. His pass is behind Edmiston. 80 is there. Edmiston steals it. Drops it back to Han. Han puts it in the corner. Machulik skates in front, but it goes all the way back to the fin. The shot on the target. And the young goaltender got a stick on it and put it over the plexi for a face-off. Paul Bly took over in nets for the Nottingham Panthers at the start of the second period. He did well when you asked him how to pronounce his name. He normally says Paul. Here is the fin. Big Marco. He's not that big, really, but he is called Marco. And Paul Bly turns it away. As you say, Paul, his name is uh, spelled B-L-A-H-Y-J. His nickname happens to be how you spell it, Lodge. But he pronounces it Bly. Strange. From the face-off, Machulik gets it back to Hand. Hand being shattered by Hunt. Again, the pass was seen by the Panthers, and they're doing a great job of breaking these plays down. Hunt to the far side of the rink, gives it to 80. 
Aidy takes it over the blue nicely. He's got Hunt out front, gets around hand, goes for the far corner, and bounces in through the circle, and the racers are back on the attack. Palmer slams on the brakes. Everyone getting set to come back on the ice. Hunt steals it. This could be a break for the Panthers. Brabant looking for a pre-mac. That hit escape, bounced away. Edmondston up to Tony Hand. Two-line pass is the call, and Hand does not like that call. Everyone going over to talk to the officials about this, but they're not going to budge on this one. They're saying it originated on the racer's side of the blue, and it was picked up on the Panthers' side of the red. It's been a long weekend for the Edinburgh racers. They're not happy about a lot of things, and that perhaps is the least or one of the least of their worries. Tony Hand was off to the racers there, just when the races, rather, just when the whistle blew. And that ended that play. Waghorn along the boards as his clearance deflected by Dunbar into the bench. We'll have another face-off. 3-2 to two the score. Nottingham leading this one. First game ended 19-2 to two with uh, Nottingham coming out on top. Nottingham coming here without Randall Weber, a key British player, who Mike Blaisdell thought could be the key. The whole tie would turn around. He injured a groin first period yesterday, hardly took any further part in it. And uh, although he's travelled with the team, hasn't even dressed tonight. Well, as it turns out, it gave Simon Hunt a chance to perform, and perform he did, scoring six goals last night. 80 was right behind him with five, and they both have one apiece this evening. Lambert up on the right side. Nice pass up onto the wing. Tate. Tate is all alone. Gets around Lovell. Tate goes in. Good save by Hansen as he went down. Lost the stick. Came up with a key save on Tate. Lovell unable to stay with him along the boards. And breaking into that net. Dunbar gives it to Edmiston who tries to work his way through the circle. He doubles back and Blaisdell stays on him. Edmiston tries to carry it out. That's not the move to make, especially when Blaisdell's around. This is better stuff as Dunbar works down the right side. Waghorn smears him into the boards. The team's changing on the fly as they go in this one. Tate along the boards gets hit by Lovell. And again, we have another offside on the play and both teams will be able to complete their changes. Ashley Tate, the new Great Britain under 21, will have to stay out of penalty trouble away on international duty. He took a few too many last time around, and this time he gets caught up with Murray Hansen, tripped up, and goes down, and doesn't get a goal. Good poke check by Hansen as he got the stick out. Took the puck and the man. Palmer taps it up, gets the rebound off of the skate, shot right on the target, and it's in the net! Why could not hold that? That was a steamer, good goal! Nice shot, halfway up the uh, height of the goal from Chris Palmer. A lot of pressure on him being brought back into the Edinburgh Racers lineup to try and do well in this semi-final. And Palmer steps over the blue line, Tony Hand watching behind him, the captain. Then the shot comes in and it's sort of flying a wee bit. And Blodge got a piece of it, but not all of it. Goaltender moves away from the shot. Goes into the back of the net to make it three apiece. 11-11 remaining on the period. The shot right on the target from Machulik with Palmer cruising out front was saved by the goaltender. Hunt from the blue line circles. Waits for a little support. The Bant is now in the corner. Blues, who seems to get stronger and better as he progresses through this season, takes the Bant out of the play. Back comes hand. Cuts in front of Palmer. Matulik is there. The shot. Hit a skate. And this awesome threesome continue to pressure the Nottingham goal. Palmer, Matulik, and Hand. As Clues just gets that away from the Bent. Pass right up the middle. Palmer just inside the red line. Alex to double back. The pass is not a good one as the Panthers with Taylor started up. Right up the middle, Brabant puts it on the wing to Hunt. Hunt somehow got that, but 80 was just a stride offside. Oye Panthers' defense 
know they've got their work cut out for them in this one. Simon Hunt couldn't quite get the puck across to Paul Lady in time to keep the play on side as the Panthers came out of defense and took it down the ice. And uh, Graham Waghorn with a job to do on that defense for the Nottingham Panthers. But they've got a big defense, the Nottingham Panthers. All four of them are over six feet tall. And they're one of the biggest defenses in the league at the moment. They're also fairly mobile. These guys can move the puck up the ice, and that's something you like to see. Twait taken off the play by Pentland, who's also a mobile defenseman. Chipped away by Renton. As that comes deep into Panther territory, Lamb picks it up in the high slot area. Lambert, rather. Lambert comes up on the right side, tries to put that through the skate and kick it over, but Pentland has seen his act before. Takes him hard into the board. Waghorn bangs it off the boards. Lamb tried to get it. Lambert nicely back to Premack. Shot comes in, deflected into the corner. Lamb throws it out. Waghorn slides it right through. Goaltender had difficulty following that one. Blaisdell was right in front. Premack takes the shot and it bounces away and the racers take the pressure off and shoot it down the ice. Icing is the call. A good spell there from the Panthers. A tough shift for Ross Lambert of the Panthers as well. He took a couple of big hits and threw one along the way as well. Referee Alex McWilliam has directed the play with the aid of his linesman all the way back down to the races end of the rink in the second period. Graham Waghorn gets his stick in, spins the racer around and then the shot goes through two sets of legs there. Had it ended up on target, it may well have uh, tricked Hansen. Waghorn had a lot more time than he thought and the shot really didn't have a lot of steam on it but there was some traffic in front and here comes Tate. Tate being hooked from behind. Tate gets away from Cruz. Cruz goes back to straight and Tate out. Shot upstairs on Hansen. Who's puck in front? They score! No goal! There's going to be a penalty and William waved that off right away. Roughing is the call out there. He put his hand up to indicate the penalty. When the goal went in, he waved it off. Let's look at this again. Taylor takes the shot. Hansen allows the rebound out front. Hansen called for roughing. Well, if that's the case, why didn't the play continue? And this is the second time we've seen this where they've blown the whistle. That is definitely roughing from Hansen. But why didn't the goal stand? The whistle shouldn't have gone until the, the very field racers had a, a good play on the puck, had control of the puck. It should have been a delayed penalty against Hansen, and the Nottingham Panthers should have had the opportunity to score and count that goal. Having said that, they've got a few spare at the moment, so. Hansen getting a bit physical in the goal crease, but uh, that's what goaltenders do. It comes with the territory. If somebody steps in your zone, boy, you gotta be aware of goaltenders coming at you. High and low. He's used to having Mike Ware there to protect him as well, and he's having to do it himself perhaps tonight. Palmer is serving the penalty. That comes all the way down the ice, so power play situation at 8.37 of the second period. 3-3 game out there. This is a lot tighter than it was last night at this stage. The Panthers with such a prolific special team unit out there unable to keep it in the zone and gives it to Taylor Taylor nonchalantly puts it over to Brabant who gives it to Blaisdell Machulik takes out Brabant and Brabant did not like that as Machulik went after him bouncing puck along the near side and unable to hang on to it Blaisdell lets a shot go and this time Clues suffers from the force of a Blaisdell shot Blues got that on the leg, and boy, did he limp. Hunt picks it up with the blue. Panthers with a three-on-three -three situation. Hunt allowed to waltz in. And Hand and Hunt have a go at each other. Whistle blows. And we have a face-off deep in the zone. Tony Hand getting physical. Blues losing his helmet out there. 
Well, Simon Hunt and Scott Clues had a little bit of a go at each other last night, and Scott Clues couldn't understand why Simon Hunt wouldn't go with him. Tony Hunt grabbed hold of Simon Hunt and pulled him out of the way there. The bottom line is the secret we told everyone about yesterday. The injured thumb. Simon Hunt's gloves don't come off. They're taped on at the moment. Face off just inside the blue. No penalty on the play. Palmer still in the box serving for Hansen. Lambert in the face off circle gets it back to Hunt who's back at the blue line. Rattled all the way around and Kremac got there in a hurry to stop it from going outside over the blue. Tate try to get a stick on it and that bounces up over the plexi will have another face off. Wasn't particularly pretty on that last shift but the special teams we were talking about look at the personnel that can go out on special teams for Nottingham. They don't have five guys that do the power play they have 10 or 12 guys that take turns on the power play and that's why the nottingham panthers are so successful right now we said this last night say it again tonight the racers rely heavily on about four players usually the three imports and tony hand it used to be three imports tony hand and scott neal but scott neal has moved on to sheffield so tony's out there on his own he's not getting a lot of support from the british players whereas if you look at the Nottingham Panthers, last night we had about seven or eight guys who contributed to the scoring, and just about anybody on that team can score. They really have a lot of depth. Shot comes in hard from way back at the blue. Taylor getting it over to Premack, and uh, a couple of big guys standing up good at the, well at the blue line, letting the shot go. That time it was uh, big Premack letting it fly. To illustrate the point you were making about the uh, need for British players on the ice, the goalie and two skaters, who's serving the penalty for Maury Hansen over there? Chris Palmer, one of the imports. Exactly. Shot. Aidy just wide of that far post as Hansen went down, didn't have to make the save. Aidy goes in hard in the corner. Comes all the way back to Taylor. Taylor right at the blue line, just pops it right back into the corner. Nottingham starting to put the passes together. Aidy back to Taylor. That comes in to Premack. Good steal there as Palmer stepped on the ice. A chance now with a two-on-one situation. Hand to Machulik. Machulik, great save by Ploy. Oh, great stop from both teams. Quick reaction as Palmer stepped on the ice to get it up to him. Machulik was robbed by Ploy. And here comes Lambert. His shot is deflected off a skate into the corner. And the youngster performing at the far end of the ring. He's sitting on the seat directly behind me on the bus coming up and on the way back. He's going to give me a rate tonight. It's going to be like working with Paul Ferguson all over again because he's going to talk me through this one over and over again. Tony Hand breaks forward, has a look around. Good heads up play by the Edinburgh Racers captain. Turns it across. Snapshot, but Bly got down well, didn't he? And turned it high and wide. Face off just outside the racers' blue line with uh, Brabant and Edmiston tying each other up. 6.15 remaining on the period. 3-3 the score line and a much closer game than last night if you've just joined us. The Nottingham Panthers beat the racers last night 19-2 after a big brawl in the second period. They collected 10 goals in that period and it was all over. This one is a lot closer at three apiece. Still the pressure now from the Panthers. Brabant. Premack, Premack, how many bites of the cherry will he get? Hansen well out of his net, but Lovell did a great job of tying up Twait. Twait couldn't get the stick down to take the shot as that came off the backboards. Great mixture of youth and experience for the Nottingham Panthers. Their player coach, Mike Blaisdell, working alongside the kid they call Smurf on Twait. Last from Garth Premack goes wide and comes back off the backboards. And then you've got Lovell holding on to Twait's stick just tying him up and rubbing him out on the boards behind the goal. Brabant gets it back. Blaisdell takes a shot through a maze of skates out there and it wide, goes wide at the target. Along the boards, Premack unable to keep it in. It comes out and goes back in again. Offside is the call. Alex McWilliam, fisherman by trade, goes out on the trawlers in the North Sea. He actually retired from ice hockey, he was persuaded to come back. Apparently it's warmer. <laughs> Edmiston loses out to Brabant. Waghorn wants it, but Blaisdell hangs on to it. Blaisdell 
looking around for Waghorn, who slammed on the brakes back at the blue line. Edmiston was robbed with the puck by Blaisdell, who's having a great shift out there. Edmiston trying to stick hand to a maze of players. Eventually bolts it back. You can only get it back as far as Waghorn. Waghorn along the boards to prevent. Shot from Blaisdell is high and wide. Edmiston at the second attempt gets it out but can't get it over to Dunbar who was moving in the opposite direction. Fremack right at the blue line. Offside is the call. A great shift from the young racers lineup out there as they put on the big guns. Rick Ravan, the Panthers captain there, taking an earned rest, well earned rest. He told the boys when uh, they got on the bus to come up here to Edinburgh for today's game, last night, don't think about drinking, it'll taste sweeter after the second leg. He kept them under control, and you've got to say the mood in the Panthers camp was quietly confident all the way. Clues to Machulik, Palmer right at the blue line is held by Lambert. Taylor gets it over the far side. And the Panthers started up on the wing. A good steal there by Tony Han. Great move by Han. Han gets it right out front. One time the Palmer is there. But what a great move by Tony Han to put him in, put himself in position to pass that puck. That was world-class hockey there. 27-year-old racist captain Tony Han showed there why he was once drafted for the NHL, for the big league. Tony had beautiful skills, sidestepping Chuck Taylor, Chuck Taylor grimaces and shrugs his shoulder and heads up play again, sees Chris Palmer in the slot, directly in front of the goal and feeds him. Again, a great move, and look at that, heads up hockey, pass over, one time shot, Palmer is there. Four to three, the score as we approach the final four minutes of this second period. A good period from the racers as they use the full width of this large ice surface to get that puck away from the Panthers. Palmer again, working with Matulik this time. Matulik with a lot of room, takes the shot, goes upstairs. And that deflects away. Why going after that in a hurry? Offside whistle there, the goal wouldn't have counted anyway. Matulik given acres of room after the youngster Matt Trickett tripped and fell. This scoreline now of 4-3 to the races is the first time they've led throughout this time. Matulik had a lot of time there. Where is the defenseman? Well, he's on his hands and knees, actually, because he hasn't got back to his feet yet. Taylor circles back to get away from Palmer. Matulik is on the far side on Waghorn. Good understanding between these two. It's only developed over the last couple of nights. Palmer just joined the team from Switzerland. And uh, he's slotting in nicely. Chopped away down the far side of the rink. Blaisdell, look at the speed. He's got the bat out front. Cruz tried to make an impression of Blaisdell on the far side of the rink. There's going to be a, a penalty as Blaisdell took out Cruz. Cleared away. That goes all the way over the... Racers goaltender has come off the ice, delayed penalty right in front. Palmer is there as Taylor takes him out of the play. Delayed penalty and the power play will go in favor of the racers. 24 of the Nottingham Panthers, Mike Blaisdell, the player coach, makes his way slowly to the Simbin. Two minutes. Roughing the penalty against him. He was a little bit over-aggressive on 77, Scott Blues, the teenager. Follows through and clatters into him. Blues have been mucking it up a little bit for the racers. A little bit of retribution called there by the player coach. Second penalty of the game for Blaisdell. The first one was for tripping, which he didn't think was a fair call. But I guess when you get your hands up like that and you almost take the guy's head off, it's fair to assess two minutes. Big hit there. Palmer is going to be called. This time it's going the other way. Fly comes off the ice. And Prevent hangs on to the puck. An extra attacker is on there for the Panthers. The goal is wide open. Edmondston goes in and misses the hit on Prevent. As soon as the racers touch the puck, the whistle will blow. They haven't touched it yet. 
Long pass over to 80. 80 works in. Pentland chops. Goaltender down. Hansen is there. A long delayed penalty. Palmer is not amused with that call. Looking will be the call on Paul Lady. He hauled Paul Lady down from behind. The 27-year-old who's just joined the team has to go and sit out two minutes. And the man advantage that was given to the races when Blaisdell took an inopportune penalty from the Nottingham viewpoint is lost by that one against Chris Palmer. Face-off deep in racers territory as the seconds tick down on this one. 2.25 remaining on the period. 4-3 is the scoreline with the racers in the lead. Lambert gets that back to Taylor. Taylor shot right on the target. An easy one for Hansen as he came down out to cut down the angle. Pianiemi goes in there and a punch is thrown. And here we go again. Taylor and Han this time. Tony Han letting it be known that uh, he can fight as well as play hockey. Han takes down Taylor and the racers fans love this. Tony Han losing his shirt, but oh, still trying to get the punches in from an impossible angle. Hey, who wants to be a linesman? This is part of the deal out there. Get in between two crazy guys who are throwing their fists around. Nice job. You're not supposed to get in there till they hit the deck, though, are you? You're not supposed to get in there and help them hit the deck. But uh, Tony Han definitely threw the first punch. A bit of a wild one. Now Tony Han throwing one on Garth Greenback of the Nottingham Panthers. Is this frustration? I don't know. Tony Hand is uncharacteristically fighting his way through this second period after setting up a great goal. He's now being told to get to the penalty box. Will he be kicked out of the game? Taylor will join him in there. Premack had words, but I don't think Premack's going to go. Taylor and Tony Hand sit in the penalty box. So once again, we see Alec McWilliam being lenient with these penalty calls. Again, a lot of officials would have said, hey, go to the dressing room. Let's take another look at this. Well, it's a rub out on the boards from Chuck Taylor, which Tony Hand didn't like. There was the big shot. The haymaker, which didn't land anywhere. And then not, then not a lot happens, does it? I mean, it's... It's a bit of wrestling. They've given each player two and two for roughing, and Taylor's got an interference penalty as well. Nottingham come out of that on the wrong end of it. Maybe Tony Hand should do that more often. <laughs> well, when I say Nottingham come out of it on the wrong end of it, perhaps the two linesmen came out of it on the wrong end of it. So the officials sort this out with Alec McWilliam in front of the timekeeper. Duncan and Craig having words explaining what they've seen. Verbant now goes in and says, I've got three fingers up. Talk me through this. <laughs> They're sorry out the coincidental penalties. Which one balances off with another one? The guys that got the penalties will stay in the box, but the teams may not necessarily skate short-handed. Well, if you don't want to lose a hockey player, you don't want to lose Tony Han. He's the guy that makes things happen for the racers. And uh, this guy's going to sit now for four minutes. And he's going to be well and truly missed out there. They were just having a hot spell, weren't they? And he was instrumental in two or three of the good moves. And he just laid on the nicest piece of ice hockey we've seen all night. Beautiful piece of stick handling to set up Chris Palmer for the go-ahead goal. Again, it could be a little frustration creeping in there, Gary. Last night they were hammered 19 to 2. When you got a team who are the current holders of this Benson and Hedges Cup, and they're beaten 19 to 2 in the first leg, boy, that is humiliating. So it is a little frustration out there. Chuck Taylor threw a couple of good punches, but look at that eye, the left eye. It's starting to grow. He's had a shot on it, yeah. He's a he's a live wire, you know, for 33 years old. He's He's the wit in the camp, as it were. He's been cracking jokes all, all the way up here and in the motel overnight. And you don't know what he's been saying to them out there. Not that he would say anything to them, of course. I gotta tell you, Gary, there is life after 30. <laughs> <laughs> racers now, 
with a four on three situation out there. Edmiston with two minutes left puts it right into the pads of Tate that bounces back into the circle. Premack just shoots it down the ice. So the racers with the man advantage. 149 on the period. Yeni Nieme gets it on the blue line. Machule, a lot easier to pronounce, takes it into the corner. Back to the fin on the hash marks. Looking for places to go. A lot of traffic in front. The shot doesn't come. Too long on the puck as Waghorn Neaton stays with him. Flipped over to the far side. Right on the target, Bly was there as Pentland got the shot away. Another chance for Pentland, 60 feet out. Deflection right in front of the goaltender. Almost trickled the wrong way for him. Machulik feeds it right back in. Right in front, Edmison took the shot. Machulik unable to keep that in along the boards. Bounces it away from Blaisdell, but Tate picks it up. Blaisdell and Tate. That ricochets high off of Pentland's stick. And we have another whistle on the play with less than a minute on the period. Tate cutting in off the left wing. He got two goals doing that last night. Not to be on that occasion. You mentioned the pronunciation, Paul. I'm running a book on how many different pronunciations you come up with that number four for the Edinburgh team. Well, I think I've only said 13 or 14. But then he's <laughs> only touched the puck 13 or 14 times. Actually, Tate is much easier to say, isn't it? Yeah face off at the top of the circle that comes back to Waghorn shot deflected off the post wicked shot from Waghorn another bite of the cherry right along the ice Lambert is there but Hansen makes the save goes down gets himself up and here comes Machulik spinning Waghorn around great move as that goes into the net is that going to count Waghorn was spun around by the Slovak Canadian and the goal is going to count. Good move, a powering move down the right side by Machulik. Oh, I want to see this one again. Unassisted goal. A two-goal spread for the first time for the races. He pulls a move on Waghorn. Waghorn turns around and dies despairingly to try to get a piece of it back. Machulik follows through and puts the puck and the Nottingham young goalkeeper into the back of the net. Matulik, an international with the Slovakians, they had to get special permission to play him in the NHL at the tender age of 18, and he uses his experience there. Less than 30 seconds on the period, 5-3, Edinburgh, with another goal. The shot comes in right on the target from Waghorn, Hansen got the pad on it, and that's cleared high, and eventually comes out with Brabant on the end of that. Play once again whistled down as McWilliams makes his way to the far boards and dishes out another penalty. Get off the ice, roughing is the call. Blues with the penalty, number 77 of the Edinburgh Racers taking a penalty they could live without. I wouldn't mind betting that in this period, for the first time in five periods of hockey in this tie, the Edinburgh team have outshot the Nottingham team. Well, I think you're right there. Scott Blues having words on the far. What ending is the call, and Clues is out of the game. A five plus a game misconduct and a butt ending. Call is an unusual one. That's where you use the top of your stick, the top of the shaft, to poke someone. And it can be very, very dangerous, and that's why they clamp down as hard as they do. Five plus game. Good night for Scott Clues. It was on Ross Lambert of the Nottingham Panthers, and it's just created one more headache. The Jock Hay, because who's he going to put out on defense now? I mean, Plews himself is a 16-year-old. I was about to say that I was I like the way Plews is playing hockey. The guy is physical, he takes the body, but on that occasion, he went a little over the top with the butt ending. And uh, when the top of that stick comes through, especially if it gets you in the midriff and you're not expecting it, then that can be painful. A lot of guys do it in the corner, a lot of guys get away with it. They let the top hand go loose and the bottom hand slides the stick through the top hand. And ooh, that can smart to get you in the midriff or just about anywhere else. But on that occasion, Alex McWilliam was very, very on the spot to uh, pick it up. They have a man in the box for five minutes to cover for clues. And that could hurt the racers. They have a two goal lead out there. Five to three is the score line. It's gonna be four on four in manpower out on the ice. There's, uh 
only one penalty counting in the box at the moment. 14 seconds on the period. All the way back to Bly as Bly gives it to Trickett. Trickett has Waghorn on the wing. Waghorn will want to take his time to bring it out. There goes the buzzer to end the second period. A good period for the Edinburgh Racers. Palmer came up with a big goal to level the score. And then another one to put the Racers in the lead. Matulik with a fine solo effort right at the end of the period. Has it now 5-3 to three for the Edinburgh Racers. Still 20 minutes of hockey to go. Anything can happen in hockey. They've just lost clues. What are the Racers going to do? Join us. We'll be back after the break. You're watching Sky Sports. Welcome back to Edinburgh. If you were with us last night, you'll know that Big Mike Ware was the man who was right at the heart of all the trouble out there on the ice. He is suspended for tonight's match, but nevertheless, he's here seeing how his teammates cope in his absence, and he's now down by the ice talking to Julia Roberts. Mike, you were sent off last night, which means you're playing no part in tonight's match. I get a bit of violence in that second period. Well, how does it look from your point of view? Well, I think... Uh you know, you got two teams that are uh, pretty intense. They both want to win. We want to win to save a little face for last night, and uh, they want to win because they want to prove uh, on TV that they're uh, the best team in the league right now. So, uh, you know, you're going to have a... Uh, I thought McWilliams kept a pretty good job. Uh, he, he seemed to let the teams go and play hard, and uh, it's, what the, it's the type of game you want to have when uh, two teams are going at it. You want to let them play and uh, decide on the ice what's going to happen. And uh, I'm not sure about... What happened there, 15 seconds left to go with uh, Scotty Plews, but uh, that's a big blow for us, uh, lose him. And another blow against our defense, which are already sitting out two guys. So, uh, you know, I just hope that uh, he keeps things under control in this third and uh, we can hopefully come out of here with a win. You were actually involved in uh, a sending off last year in the Benton Hedges Cup, I believe. Um, do, you, do you think you should change your style of play in this country? It's difficult to say, you know, uh, I still kind of wondering what I was sent off for last night. You know, I seen an incident that just happened there with Tony Hand and, uh, you know, the, the referee had it under control. He gave the guy a two plus two and uh, he's going to be back out there in a little while and helping our team. But I have yet to throw a punch in the incident that I was knocked out for. So, uh, you know, I, I'm i a big guy and when I hit guys, I'm usually three or four stones uh, more than they are. And, uh, you know, it's it looks a lot worse than it actually is, but I'm trying to do my best to help the team and uh, hopefully the referees, some of them will be able to see it and uh, take into consideration the size difference and uh, realize that I'm only trying to do my job out there. Thanks a lot, Mike. Back to David. The towering Mike Ware, really a huge man and uh, very petite Julia Roberts there asking him all the tough questions. Well, uh, Rocky, let's, let's ask you about uh, what you thought of that theory because really the racers, they've played better and it's not been bad, but of course, um, overall, it's out of reach, but they're putting some pride back in. Well, it's what we talked about before the game, David. Right now, Murrayfield's come out here to win this hockey game. Last night's game is all done with. They know they had a big uh, lead to try and catch up on. That didn't bother them. They wanted to come home tonight, show that once again, they can come back and win at home. And uh, they're setting themselves up for the rest of the league. They got themselves a little 5-3 lead here. That was all created by the big line of Han Matulik and uh, uh, Chris Palmer. Yeah, well, Palmer's playing well, isn't he, and scoring well. Well, he's just come back in from Switzerland. He was uh, just came back in from Switzerland. He's been over there for most of the season. Here he made a nice little pass up to Tony, and Tony dropped it right back to him. Chris just comes across the blue line. Goaltender Nottingham gave a little bit too much room there on the glove side. He might have been a little screened, and he, he caught him up in a Apparently he's side. a big favorite with the fans here, isn't he, Palmer? He, uh, he knows how to put the puck in the net, and because of that, the fans want to see him do that all the time, absolutely. Uh, the second goal. The second goal here. As we see, Nottingham's trying to create something to happen here, and again, a, a giveaway here by uh, by the Nottingham player, but Tony Hatt picks up the puck here, and here he comes in on Chuck Taylor, and he puts a move on here that just deeks Chuck Taylor right out of his jock strap, right there. Look <laughs> at him fish for that thing. But with his great vision again, Tony spots uh, Chris Palmer in the high slot area. He just waits a bit, he sees Chris Palmer go into the high slot, he feeds a nice pass across to him, and Palmer just with a quick one-timer beats the goaltender to the short side. Really nice goal. That's the best one-two combination all last year in the league. 
must have scored about 300 goals between them and did it again tonight. Right, let's have a look at the other piece of action that uh, contributed to the scoreline here tonight. Well, the big thing is here is you got Ivan Matulik, who I think is probably one of the fastest skaters in the league. He's a heck of a strong skater and he just blows by Waghorn here and he drives to the net and as he drives to the net he takes his body, he takes the goaltender's <laughs> body, he takes his team bus and he puts the puck into the net. Yeah, terrific stuff, wasn't it? All guts. All guts. Have you enjoyed that there? I mean, was that was that your sort of ice hockey? Well, let's uh, let's face it, you know, there was a lot, there was this a 5-3 score, there was uh, three goals scored there in the Murrayfield side, we had uh, some altercations happen out there, it's intense. They're not just sitting back and saying, hey, you know, it's just a hockey game. They're going out there and they're knocking each other around. They're getting intense out there. They're working hard. One thing I wanted to ask you was about the actual stadium because the ice area here is much larger than we saw last night in Nottingham. Yeah. Is that gonna? Is that a problem to visiting sides? Well, it's, it, it really does help out Edinburgh here. Uh, the big thing on them, they like the big ice surface. It gives them a chance to move the puck around the ice. They're a very good team passing the puck. Gives Tony Hand a little more room to do his magic. Last night, Nottingham, a little shorter ice surface. That extra three strides when you don't have that in your favor to get away from somebody and they're always on top of you makes it for a tighter checking game. Tonight Tony's got some room and he's making things happen. And finally uh, on this particular chat, how are the Panthers going to approach this final period? Well they're going to go out there, one thing for sure is to play intense for the one number one reason is not to get hurt. Yeah. The big thing is when you relax and you take it easy out there, next thing you know you're going to get hit with some kind of hit that might hurt you for the next weekend. They're going to come out there, they're going to work hard, they're not going to get hurt, they're going to win the game or try to win the game, win the series, and from there on in, look to next week, or December 4th. Fine, well, more action still to come. Of course, the final in this competition, as uh, Rocky said, later on, well, in fact, early next month. For the moment, though, we'll take a short break. See you again in a couple of minutes' time. You're watching Sky Sports. Welcome back to Edinburgh. They say it's a family sport, and there's uh, clear proof in your picture, the baby in arms and the lady just behind... I know she's feeling the cold, but she must be a very quick knitter. She's trying to knit a sweater to keep warm tonight. Um, we're about to get underway with the third period here. Um, Rocky, we, we had a bit of uh, fisticuffs in that last period. We discussed that earlier. We said, really, neither side wants to get involved in that, but nevertheless, something did happen. Well, here you go. It's Tony Hand. He's, uh, Tony Hand's not a really big player, to tell you the truth. It's compared to Chuck Taylor, especially. Chuck Taylor must not weigh him by about 25 pounds. And Tony won't back down from anybody. I'll tell you, when Mike Tyson comes out of prison, he should go and see Tony. I think he gives some uh, some pointers there. Tony here, he's got his head down, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And all of a sudden, he's going to come up with a right hook that just about catches Mr. Chuck Taylor. It would have been, there it was. Oh, that would have locked. That would have been right done, finished. Now, you know, here I am. I stuck my uh, foot in my mouth. Because last night, David, I said, this just doesn't happen this much in our game. That's right. It is a hard-hitting game. Yeah. You know, but again, the fans, they, they know it's a hard-hitting game. And this does come into play once in a while. Unfortunately, tonight we've had a bit of it, but it is an intense game. you got two teams here. They're not going to back down for one another. And it should make for a good, interesting third period, I'm sure. Excellent. Fine. Well, we're all set to go then. Let's rejoin our commentary team of Gary and Paul. The referee Alex McWilliam calls the teams together. The racers will have Tony Hand in the box. He picked up a 2 plus 2. Taylor got 2 plus 2 plus 2, so he's, he's in there for a total of six minutes. And... Uh, Right at the end of the period, Scott Clues got a five minute plus a game, so he's gone. And his penalty is being served by David Park. So he sits for five minutes. So all sorts of problems at the start of this third and final period for the racers. But they do have a two goal cushion, five to three. After the first game last night in Nottingham, it was 19 to two. So you can forget about this competition as far as the racers are concerned. It's all about personal pride right now. The racers playing from right to left as pre-match for the Panthers. Fires it in off the boards. 80 loses out in the corner. Dribbles into the corner and the Panthers with pre -Mac right back at the blue line. Took it out over the blue and Duncan saw that and says, oh, must have been about an inch. Well, it's a two-goal lead on the night. As you say, for the racers, the Panthers lead it by a bagful over two legs. The Nottingham Panthers strip has been redesigned this year. They thought it looked a little bit soft, a little bit cuddly, and now they've made it more aggressive. Your words, not mine. Premack gets it over. Tate gets a lucky bounce and takes it into the corner. Pentland goes after him all the way back to 80. Fires it right through. Hansen is there with Brabant knocking on the door. Brabant now into the corner. 
Slides it back. Premack shot. Big goal from way back at the point. Premack kept it low. Garth Premack drills one from the blue line for the Nottingham Panthers. And it's down the side of the goal where Murray Hansen had the problem earlier with an injury to his leg. Premack with a big cannon. And it's right into the back corner behind Hansen on his injured side, on the injured leg. It's all the way back. Goaltender can see it all the way. Premack beating Hansen on that one from about 59 feet out. Pentland, as we confirm the scoreline at 5-4. Couldn't get it out of the zone. Blaisdell puts it right in behind. 18.54 remaining on the period. And the Panthers have closed the gap. But here comes Machulik. Machulik has got a great change of speed out there. We saw him turn Waghorn around. He cut to his left and broke to his right. And then really put on the afterburners and uh, skated right around the big defenseman. And this is one of the big things he has going for him. Rocky Saganuk said he's one of the fastest guys in the lead. It really is deceptive the way he changed his speed out there. You don't even know he's doing it. Lambert on the side of the net. Back to Premack again. Slides it across. The Panthers queuing up to take these shots. Blaisdell at the second attempt. Got it across and everyone waiting for a pass. A giveaway there. Machulik will take this. He's got Edmiston on the wing. Machulik skating slowly with it as he waits for Tony Han to come back onto the ice and sitting at two plus two Taylor will be in there for two minutes long longer than he is offside is the call as Babant takes it over 80 was well and truly offside A power play goal for the Nottingham Panthers and captain Rick Brabant will be pleased to see his specialist unit getting back on the board they have a man advantage for a further two and a half minutes at the start of this the third period and they'll be looking to try and even the score up on the night and salvage their own pride as it were they won't have enjoyed that second period there's taylor and uh, youngster park who's serving the penalty for scott blues tony hand has come back on the ice and he immediately goes back onto the blue line five on four situation out there even though each team have a man in the box Brabant with a burst of speed, nice pass up to 80, 80, good move to get around hand, takes a shot right off the pad, Brabant had the rebound and carried it over the red line, Brabant from the side of the net, slides it over to the hash marks, Twait stumbles into the boards and Pentland is there to hit it only as far as Tate, Twait in the corner from Brabant, moving up his pre-mac, the clearance goes down the ice, Tony Hand got a piece of that as he came deep to help out from behind the net the Panthers set it up the bent slides it in front Tate over to the far wing Tate looking for places to go and again we have an offside call the officials very sharp right along that blue line Paul Lady, 22 of the Nottingham Panthers sidestep one challenge and steams in he likes to shoot, a couple of guys on the far post, hovering looking for a rebound. Brabant was right there, he had it, but uh, couldn't get it down on his stick to take the shot. Brabant now back on the blue line. As his power play for Nottingham continues, Blaisdell with that quick burst of speed, gets round Tony Hand right out front, Lambert couldn't get the shot away. Machulik now on the left wing, this guy also has speed. A couple of speedsters there with uh, Brabant staying with him. Hand shoots it in at the corner. This is good stuff as Pentland couldn't move to get that puck and trap it in the zone. A couple of opportunities were brewing there. A giveaway by Tony Hand. A chance now. The backhand shot. Hansen stops Lambert and that's cleared down the ice. Pressure at both ends. Even shorthanded. Murrayfield Race is doing okay as they kill off this major penalty to Clues. This is a better spell from the racers. Hand couldn't get the pass through. Next whistle, Chuck Taylor steps back on the ice. The big defenseman has been sitting for six minutes. Palmer goes in after 80. 80 gets to it first. 
the bat, wants it behind the net, loses that in the skate, and the Panthers come out slowly down the right side. A little tip through, and Palmer was unable to slide across to get that. 80 goes back deep. Why the goaltender reaches out for Palmer? I wouldn't do that. Palmer is a very tough character. He may not be big, but he can uh, let the punches fly. And if a goalie reaches out and you skate in front of him, he's fair game in a hockey game. Taylor steps on the ice. Mike Blaisdell calls a timeout for the Nottingham Panthers just to try and G them up a little bit and wind them up a bit, I think. Nick William went over to the timekeeper's bench and the, they cancelled the timeout. I've never seen a referee overrule a timeout there. Never seen it before. You're entitled to call a timeout. Face off deep in Patrick territory. <laughs> Thank you for that explanation, Paul. <laughs> Edmiston gets set for the face off. And Lambert gets it back. He obviously didn't say please. Long pass right up the middle. Lambert comes in. Breakaway goes in. Forehand scores. Upstairs. All tied up. And five on five in manpower as well with the five minute penalty having just finished for the racers. Who needs a timeout? The Nottingham Panthers steam down the ice. And Ross Lambert finishes well. He's not renowned for it. He's renowned, as you say, as a workhorse. But he goes down there, keeps his composure, and buys it top show. This is the kind of thing you do at the end of the practice for a beer. You keep trying to score on the goalie. The guy who ends up with the most goals gets the most beers. Goaltenders are used to that kind of thing. Shot right on the target at the other end of the rink. 5-5 game out there with 15 minutes remaining. This game really has picked up here in the uh, last couple of uh, moments of this uh, period. The shots raining in from all angles. Tapped along the boards. Blaisdell tried to get a stick on that, but it came out front, and here come the Panthers again. Hunt got it over, looks for the return pass, and just couldn't get a stick on it as that bobbles along the boards. Good pass by Palmer to Machulik. Machulik lets the shot go and just misses that far post. Hand keeps it in. Gets it to Palmer, back to Machulik. These three working well. That bounces off the goaltender stick. And here comes Hunt. Hunt, a long shot. Hansen is there to stop it. And falls on it. No one around. Someone should be talking to that goaltender to let him know he had all the time in the world. Tony Hand, the captain of the Edinburgh Racers. His brother missing through suspension. And there's his mother. He gets called quite a few things around the rinks. She stirs it up. She's the most vociferous supporter of her two boys. And she follows them around the country and gets behind them and really cheers. Face off, deep in racer territory. They're going to do that one again. Several players encroaching in that circle. In fact, the uh, BIHA, the association that runs the sport, has launched a dream team competition. You could nominate a name for it. And one very big man named his team the Mrs. Hand to Fife campaign. On the far side of the ring, Palmer. Palmer, 80, almost got a goal. Palmer lost control of the puck as the racers collided on the far side of the ring. Here comes Hand on the wrong wing. Hand hangs onto it for a long time, gives it to Lovell. Revant is in there to help mix things up, get a piece of it. Hand shoots it back into the corner. Matulik is chasing. Dumped to the far side, Tate and everyone else on the team look back to see what was going on. Players falling away from the puck. The play allowed to continue. Palmer to Hand and Michulik. And Kochek right at the blue line. A two on two, now it's a three on two. Tate with 80 and Premack and 80 again. Going over the line, but the whistle blows for a roughing call. Palmer retaliating to action behind the play, off the puck. Last thing the racers need once again is to take a penalty. And worse still, a penalty to a key player like Chris Palmer. 
Roughing the call as uh, the faceoff will be taken just inside the racer's zone. Panthers taking a long time to get their team together as Lambert goes out with Blaisdell and Hunt. Good line, these three. They really have worked hard. Blaisdell with all the experience in the world along with Hunt, the goal scorer, and Lambert, who's now putting in the muscle in the corner, the hard worker who coughs up the puck. Shot from a sharp angle, another shot, hands it down. Oh, number 13, Hunt, does it again. Never say die. Hunt, skating backwards through the crease, picks up his second goal of the game. His eighth goal against the racers in two periods of hockey. Persistent play by the player coach, Mike Blaze, so got the first shot. Simon Hunt's shot was rebounded as well, but he puts the second rebound away. Another power play goal for the Nottingham Panthers. Another up a rebound. The race is hurting on defence. Without experienced players, there, no one to help Hansen sweep away the garbage. One of the problems with the racers right now is if they don't have anyone to take the body in front. Blaisdell came right in front of the net, took the shot, was unmolested. Boy, we're going to have a penalty here. Lambert mixing it up with the fin. High sticking is the call, but as I was saying, Ware is gone from the lineup, Clues is now gone, and these are the two physical guys on the racers' team. Lambert goes to the box for two minutes for high sticking, but it really does leave Moray Hansen unprotected in front of that net. There's no one there with any muscle at all to protect him. We've already seen Moray Hansen using his own uh, big blocker and glove to try and protect himself earlier in this one. So. The workhorse of the Nottingham Panthers, Ross Lambert, takes a two-minute penalty. And the racers get a power play opportunity. A man advantage on the ice to try and get level on the night. Edmiston goes up against Brabant, and Edmiston wins that. Gets it quickly over to Palmer, who is way over on the left wing. Puck is jammed along the boards, eventually squirts out, and Hand picks it up in neutral ice territory. Hand to the far side of the rink. Pachula gets away from Brabant. Good move. Takes the shot. Scores. Oh, what a shot. Upstairs. Power play goal. He did it on his own. This guy is a class act. Kind of leadership the races have been looking for. Side steps one, side steps another. Tony Hand set him up with an assist, but it was primarily a solo effort. Comes round, Brabant sidesteps backwards and then whips one in. And there's nothing the young keeper can do. Goaltender here, perhaps a little too far back. Got to come out to the top of that crease. You're not going to get it by being way back on the red line. 12-22 remaining in the game. 6-6 again. The Panthers are back level once again. Brabant fakes the shot. Tate. Tries to get it out front on the backhand, throws it in behind the goal. Brabant cruises in, is tied up by Tony Hand. And that's pumped all the way out to Waghorn. Waghorn flips it back in. And the offside whistle blows. Well, we've seen some great individual hockey tonight, haven't we? He's in super skills with plays being turned inside out. Waghorn felt the force of the Tulik on his second goal and then on his third goal it was other Panthers players that had to sit back and watch as the ex-Slovakian international got his hat-trick Primak deep through the circle prevent his pass bounced off a skate the official skate that is Prevent almost stole it again and now he's got it brings it up over the blue 80 is on the wing goes for the top corner and just misses Palmer breaks on the left side, hand up the middle, goes over to the far side, Brabant gets that, but Palmer is there in a hurry. Good two-way hockey from these guys. No one has stopped skating. Brabant centered it right out front. 80 was there, but Hansen pounces on that. The Nottingham Panthers do not want to go out of this building on a defeat. They've only lost one game all season long, either in the league or in the B and H. They lost to Sheffield in the cup but they gained revenge for that in their own building 
here, he was bubbling around Hansen, he managed to smother it in the end to deny them a go-ahead goal. Face off in Racers territory with Edmiston going up against Lambert and Edmiston has been winning those draws. Tough assignment there to take off, take Lambert and uh, Blaisdell off the clock. Hunt is left alone to take the shot after spinning around. Oh, Dunbar walked into that one. Taylor said, thank you very much. This is going to be the easiest hit of the night. Dunbar looking the wrong way, a real hospital pass. Now it's the goaltender getting in front of that, but it's Hunt again getting the shot away. Dunbar taps it back into the corner. Lambert with his head down doesn't realize that the puck has gone up on the wing. Can Lamb come out and get it? Goaltender there in a hurry to hit it out into neutralized territory. Hey, where are my feet? Where are my feet? Their whistle on the play with the 6-6 scoreline. And I guess it's an understatement to say this is a lot more even than last night. There's intensity in this one, Paul, but it's in, in waves, isn't it? At times, it's a little play that winds a player up, and he has a real good go for it. Simon Hunt angry at the moment on the bench because he's been called for a two-line pass when he says he clipped his feet on the way, and what have you. The intensity there isn't, isn't at its highest level, but what can you expect? Well, the guys are certainly putting on a show. We've seen some beautiful skills, beauty, beautiful skills. I think racers are playing good hockey, you know. Oh, and there's another, another big shot. Who doesn't see a lot of ice, doesn't score a lot of goals. In fact, that's his first in the competition. Took that one from 60 feet out, and young boy is bleeding, beaten upstairs. Well, that might shut Chatterbox. Paul Bly up. It was a vicious shot. Bly will have wished to have done better with it. Matulik won the draw back to Les Lovell, the younger of the twins, and he fires home. Again on that goal, as we take a look at the scoreline, 7-6 with Edinburgh in the lead. The goaltender was down before the shot. It took a long time getting back up. The shot was well and truly back at the blue line. Goaltender should be up, shouldn't be going down on those shots. They're high, stay up, get him in the chest. But Lovell picking up his first goal of the competition. Good for him. There's Lovell proudly displaying Eric the Polar Bear, the new Edinburgh Racers logo on his shirt here. But it's all about getting experience. Paul Blythe's getting experience. Blaisdell had the opportunity to give him some ice time at the top level. You can't uh, get better at this game unless you play it. It's like anything in life. You have to do it. For Bant, backhands it in the corner to 80. 80 gets away from Lovell at the side of the net. The shot doesn't reach the goal. Tate tries to pick it up for a second attempt. For Bant, Scoots around the side of the net, looks to get it to the far post or far point, and he does. Waghorn took the shot and somehow got a skate on that, preventing it from going down the ice. Brabant is back on the attack. His little pass through to 80 is there. 80 goes for it. Tate goes for it. Hand comes up with it now, slides it along the boards. And again, some poor clearances out there are not helping the Edinburgh cause. Machulak. Would have had a stick on that had it not been deflected away by Lovell. And we have a whistle on the play, but uh, the momentum shifting from one end to the other as this game winds itself down 7 6. The Edinburgh Racers hanging on to that lead into the last 10 minutes of this competition. And as you say, another wave of intensity coming there from the Nottingham Panthers. Now the races have sent Edmiston out, two youngsters to try and get something going for Edinburgh. Before that level goal, I was about to say that uh, I thought the racers were playing, had been playing well in the first two periods of this game, despite the loss of Clues, Ware, and of course uh, Paul Hand, who's out through suspension and injury. He won't be back until at least Christmas. Oh, difficult puck for the goaltender as that bounced upstairs off the stick, and Lambert was right there cruising. But, uh, you know, these guys are without experienced defensemen except for Pittman out there. Mike Blaisdell fires this one all the way in. It's a long-range effort which bubbles up and then Lambert can't latch onto that rebound. But as you say, the Nottingham Panthers have the more experienced defensemen. And in a, overall, it's been a battle of the two defenses and Nottingham's run out, haven't they? 
That's absolutely right. Pianini Niemi is out there too. I shouldn't forget him. He's got the puck now. Not my favorite man. Not because I don't like him personally. It's just his name. What have you got against Marco? <laughs> a chance now as the shot comes right on the target. Richie Lamb, who again, like so many youngsters, hadn't seen a lot of ice time, getting a chance to prove himself out there. Blaisdell with the puck. Blaisdell forces his way right through. This is good stuff from Blaisdell and Cole as Hunt was robbed right at the doorstep. Blaisdell comes in heavy on Edmiston from behind. Blaisdell perhaps a little foolish there. That was unnecessary. He's having words to the officials and to the racers out there. Edmiston took the full force of that blow. We're going to see some penalties here, Gary. Well, Edmiston, in the eyes of the player coach of the Nottingham Panthers, threw a cheap shot and he stepped in for a little retribution. They've called nothing against Edmiston for it. But it's quite right that the 34-year-old ex nhl should get stuck in for his younger players. They've been getting stuck in to protect him for the last few games. Lead by example, that's what I say. Blaisdell in his third penalty of the game. Sits for two. It's always the guy who retaliates, who retaliates, gets the penalty. The officials often miss the first one. I'm not saying they're bad officials, but sometimes you just don't get a chance to see it. But uh, after the crowd roar, the yells from players on the ice, and then a chop a few seconds after the penalty, that's the one that's picked up. Machulik flips it to the far side. Waghorn goes after him. Machulik slams on the brakes. Waghorn brings him down and comes out on top on this one. Machulik didn't like it. Palmer, she scores! Well, is that justice or what? Well, with Matulik banging his stick on the ice, screaming about a call that wasn't made by the referee, Palmer pounced on the puck and fired it home. Tony Hand with the backhand pass and a one-timer from Palmer. Again, the keeper goes down. Some would say a little early, but it's a one-timer shot. It was a wicked shot. Palmer with two goals in the second period. Gets his hat-trick here in the third, and Butler goes back in between the pipes. 8-6 the score. The Enver Racers, with a second shy of eight minutes left in this game, extend their lead once again. Butler back between the pipes for the Nottingham Panthers. I felt that uh, Bly was a little out of his depth on the last couple of shots. He was going down, didn't need to, and that's something that Blaisdell will have to work on. It's a common call for goaltenders. Hey, why go down when you can stay up and let it hit you on the head? <laughs> How many hit you on the head, Bill? One too many, I think. <laughs> well, that's why I'm a commentator now. <laughs> A bouncing puck and Machula comes down on the right side. This guy has a bag full of moves. Oh, that one is not one that he had planned on making. It went off a stick and deflected high off of Premax face. And that's a rough call for a defenseman. You get the stick out there and try to deflect it away, but sometimes it backfires and comes upstairs. Well, Premack, one of the smoothest backward skaters currently working the British League. Gets the poke check in on Matulik. No way past him, but it does deflect and hit him right on the bridge of the nose from the look of things. Matulik, one of the fastest players, one of the biggest handfuls. Those fans will enjoy the journey home. They know on aggregate their boys are going through to the final. Out on the ice. Lambert spins around. Blaisdell lets the shot go from a sharp angle. Pentland got in front of that. Goes back to tidy up and get it over to Palmer. Palmer chips it through, and here comes Hand. Who's he got on the left? Machulik. Hand slams on the brakes. Now he's got Lovell. Lovell takes the shot. The stick in front directs that high. And every time you see Hand, you either see Machulik or Palmer. Good understanding between the three of them. This time, Lovell came up to uh, help out, and that's what forwards like to see. Mobile defensemen getting up to help out the forwards when they need them. That's what they tell the youngsters. It's all about the defenseman getting forward and helping the forwards and the forwards getting back to help the defenseman. And Les Lovell with his first goal in the cup inspired him up. He wants to get a second. 
And here he goes. The shot comes in. Wicked shot from Lovell. Where has he been hiding this shot? Pentland taps it through, and Tony Hand has to come back to help out Palmer. Didn't want to turn around to get that one because Hunt was staring him down. That would have been another hospital pass. Tipped up on the wing to Palmer. He's got lots of time over on the wing, but no support. Flips it high, and that's gloved down. Hand shoves it right back into the corner. Trickett is double teamed by Matulik and Palmer. That goes the distance. No icing on the plate as the Panthers change up on the fly. Pass forward from Hand to Palmer is just a step too far for Pants. The first to speed now for Pants. Trying to skate through Kenley. That didn't work. Hand with a lot of time eventually picks up his act and gets the shot away. Tony Hand sometimes is guilty of playing at his own pace out there when everyone else is going twice as fast, but it seems to work for him. He collects a lot of goals. Last year's top scorer in the league. 80 against Pentland. Pentland hangs on. 80 hangs in there too. Penalty coming up. Pentland gets up high on 80. And we have a penalty coming. Holding the stick. And boy, are they clamping down on that one this year. McWilliam looks back with a wry smile and says, yes, I saw it. <laughs> Paul uh, Pentland had a wry smile as well. Eddie's got hold of Pentland's stick. We've talked about plays having a bit of a history. Paul Eddie came to Nottingham after a period in air. He was thrown out. Next night here in Merrifield, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Paul Pentland after two minutes and was thrown out. The two penalties together added up to a five-match suspension, a three-match suspension. So in five matches, he played 22 games. Him and Paul Pentland, they've got a history. Eighty sits now for two for holding that stick in the corner. Face-off outside the racer's zone as they have a two-goal lead here. Eight to six, the scoreline. We have 14 goals tonight, 21 goals last night. This is a timekeeper's nightmare, that's for sure. Tony Hand, nicely over to the far side. Less than five minutes on the hockey game. A, give, a giveaway there to Blaisdell as Blaisdell works it over. Gets back in front. Oh, nice acrobatics there from Maury Hansen. Made the save and then reached up like, well, you say a cricketer, I say a baseball player, and just rubbed that down. Well, perhaps he was watching the film Bill Durham this afternoon. In fact, it was the Panthers that watched it on the way. It's up there. He looked taller there, didn't he? He's actually thinner. He's been losing weight, not gaining height. When you reach up, you do get taller and you do lose weight because your body stretches. I know, I do it for photos. <laughs> Palmer. Palmer slowly up the middle. Goes for Matulik in the two-line pass. Palmer. Shooting the puck from his side of the blue. Machulik picking it up on the wrong side of the red. Those photographs are those the ones with the little numbers across the bottom? That's the right. right. Sure. Face off where that pass originated. Just inside the blue line in the racer zone. 8-6 that score line. And it's been a good one for the racers. Long shot rebound. Lambert is there, but Tony Hand gets a stick on it. Lambert drives it back as the Panthers kill off this penalty. Lambert on the far side of the rink has Brabant in front. Lambert hangs onto it. Who's got the penalty out there? Lambert falls down, smothers that one in the corner. Good stuff by Ross Lambert as he continues to wear down the seconds on this penalty. Look at the work ethic from Ross Lambert on that play, the way he was hustling and bustling and driving forward. And this from a guy who had a very, fairly serious operation in the summer. He had a hernia operation, he had a stomach pull or a groin pull that just wouldn't settle down last year. He rested it as much as he could, he iced it, he had injections. Couldn't do anything about it, ended up with an operation just a few weeks before the start of the season. Taylor's shot is handled easily by Moray Hansen. Palmer on the far side of the rink puts it behind the goal to Tony Hand. Hand to Machulik. Machulik, rink wide pass is intercepted by Brabant. Shot from 60 feet out. Good save by Hansen as he came out to cut down the angle. The trip by Brabant is not whistled down by the officials. And here come the racers. Edmiston on the right. Palmer with the puck. Palmer 
slowly over the blue, has no support at all. Gravant takes the puck off him. Eventually, Machulik comes in to help out, but that comes out of the zone. And the racers are not putting it together on this power play. But that makes me eat my words as Tony Han goes over and picks his second goal in the game. <laughs> nice one by Tony Han. Just as I said, the racers were not putting it together. What does he do? Put the puck in the net for number nine. Tony Han goes on a solo run, has a little skate around, little burst of speed, cuts inside, whips one at the bottom corner, and that pleases his mother. Here we see the game, not a lot to it, quite a simple goal, nice little curl out of center ice and a shot. Han having a good game out there as that bounces to Hansen. Han scored the first goal of the game, 3.23 remaining. 9-6 now the score. It's not going to change things. The Nottingham Panthers will go through to that big final in Sheffield on the 3rd of December against the Cardiff Devils. Well, the races have salvaged some pride, haven't they? That's what they had to do. Treat this as a one-off game. Not set the record straight, as it were, but just make people think that, yes, we can beat the Panthers. Well, it's not over yet, but they're doing it without some key players. And uh, that makes will make them feel a lot better. Martin Hansen coming up with a save. Let's look at this action again. A little flip in there from Trickett. Hansen smothers that. That's the right thing to do. A lot of traffic around there. And Hansen was right to force the face off. The Panthers without a key player in Weber as well. And they would also point to the fact that their intensity levels were lower than they would have been had it been started even strength and everything like that. Absolutely right. It's difficult to get motivated for a game when you're leading by 17 goals but uh, the Panthers have done a great job out there boy there's no uh, lack of commitment from these guys right now the shot from Hunt is blocked by Hansen got the blocker out some good checking on the wing by Lambert helped set that off hand spins around flips it into the far corner as Palmer is brought down no penalty on the play Palmer was interfered with in neutralized territory as he tried to break for that pass, but McWilliam let it go. Hand. Machulik. Over to the far side, and Pentland squeezes it over to Machulik, who taps it right up for Palmer, almost intercepted by Primack. Coming up to the final couple of minutes of this hockey game, 80. Nice pass to Brabant, over to Hunt. Hunt takes the first shot right in the crease. Hansen almost fanned on that, but recovered in time. Well, the tide's turned luck-wise, hasn't it? Whereas in the past few periods, Hunt would fire those that sneak through and bubble across the line. Now the racers have earned some luck of their own, and now they're staying out. He sets it up, didn't like the first setup, waited, got a shot away, but then it stayed and it stood for Hansen. What about that quick release on the backhand pass from Rabant? Didn't even look, got the forehand pass, flipped it over to Hunt who let go of the shot and almost uh, picked up a goal. Murrayfield, or Edinburgh rather, have called a timeout. It'll give them a breather and a chance to uh, regain their composure. The momentum was starting to shift. Hansen came up with a save and now they've got a 30 second timeout to talk things over as I said it's not going to change anything in the long run but it's all about this game for them right now before their home fans salvaging some pride and getting back into winning ways for league uh, hockey when it comes up for them well the personnel that will go out for the next face off will probably see the game out for the Merrifield Racers so that's why they wanted to take the uh, 30 second break and get the extra rest and uh, recovery time under their belt. The Nottingham Panthers fans still smiling, but the Racers fans too, with a little bit to shout about. Absolutely. A lot of people have come to support the Racers despite that dreadful 19-2 scoreline last night. And you got to give the fans credit coming out on a wet, cold night to support a hockey team that has just lost by... 17 goals the night before. Big shot by Waghorn. Hit the post on Hansen. These shots are coming in at quite a speed. 
Blaisdell got it back to Waghorn. Blaisdell can't control that bouncing puck. Machulik gets it over to Palmer. Winds up, shot right on the target. And Butler goes down. Machulik so quick to get the pass over to Palmer. Oh, that was pretty again. Machulik going the wrong way on that. Finding Palmer. These guys have an extra sense out there. And that too was good. Again, some excellent passing as this game opens up in the dying stages. Brabant and 80 working well. Penalties coming up as Brabant goes hard into the corner. The Finn squares off with Rick Brabant as Brabant went heavy and got the gloves off and the helmet off and started throwing the punches. Geez, you'd think with the scoreline the way it is that these guys would relax. Well, the Panthers are going to relax on the bus on the way home, aren't they? The Finn comes from Ulu in Finland, which is actually where some of Alex Dampier's ancestors come from, the Great Britain coach. Is that where they make Ulu oops? <laughs> I don't know, but it's easier to say Ulu than it is their uh, surname that you've been saying. It was stick work that started and led to those penalties. Two minutes for slashing against Marco the Finn. And uh, Rick Rabant retaliated. And they've been going at it a little bit during the game, and it played. I mean, in fact, Rabat slashed straight back on the back of uh, the Finns' legs. We did see that one quite clearly. So, slashing and roughing are the calls. Nine to six is the scoreline. The faceoff will move outside of the zone, and that's why Chuck Taylor is having words with the officials saying, hey, bring that faceoff back into the racer's zone. Rabat, well, what can you say about this guy? One of the most prolific goal scorers in the country over the years. Nottingham just called the timeout and Brabant to move from Durham where he saw himself win the league championship and the uh, uh, overall championships with them and then do the same thing with Cardiff. Was hoping to do it this year with the Nottingham Panthers. He loves to win and he says people hate losers and I don't want to be a loser. And he's come to Nottingham, he says, to be a winner and to lead them through two cup success Nottingham won the cup a couple of years ago but uh, he says they're overdue another victory the Nottingham Panthers you know probably won't mind losing this one at the end of the day it takes the pressure that's been building up from an unbeaten streak they've lost they've lost a game that didn't really matter and therefore they've lost their unbeaten streak again well the main thing is that uh, they are in the final Cardiff Devils will be there as well the Murrayfield Racers, as they were last year, beat the Devils. And uh, this year, well, they won't get a look in. It's going to be the Panthers, and they, uh, they deserve it. The Panthers have played some great hockey, and they continue to apply the pressure. 80 and Palmer on the far side of the ring. Taylor lets go the shot, and that took a bounce. As Hansen went down, went over the pad, Waghorn flips it to the far side to Taylor. Taylor, nice pass through to 80, couldn't control that. One minute remaining on the hockey game. Palmer knows it's all about pride now. Machulik shot, upstairs, goaltender hangs on to that, good save. And Machulik goes in to say, well done, son. Steve Butler on his second stint of duty out there for the Nottingham Panthers in this one. And he stopped the rot, didn't he? He went in and Paul Bly, the youngster was struggling. Matulik had got Bly's number and Butler's gone in there and stopped the rot. But the Nottingham Panthers and the Edinburgh Racers have certainly turned on a good exhibition for ice hockey. It's been a good advert for the sport these uh, six periods. Waghorn with Palmer on him. Palmer, Machulik, Tony Hand way back at the blue line. Both teams are the man in the box. Lambert just taps it over the uh, blue line to get it out of the zone. Hand skating back against 80. Long pass through, nicely taken by Palmer. Edmiston, 30 seconds. Edmiston puts it upstairs too high. Matulik on the far side of the rink gives it back to Dean Edmiston. Palmer, nice move by Palmer, trying to set it up. Edmiston was the intended receiver. It bounced back nicely. And here's Matulik, 15 seconds. Tap back. Hand knows the clock is ticking down. He really doesn't care. He knows this game is in the bag for the racers. But overall, over the weekend, the Nottingham Panthers are the winners. 
Nottingham fans, as fans will make the lengthy journey home to Nottingham, but it will seem short, won't it? A 17-goal lead from the first leg, a three-goal defeat tonight. They've won by 14 goals on aggregate. They're in the final against the Cardiff Devils, and they were looking strong throughout. An excellent performance by the Enver Racers. They really did deserve this one. Lovell played well on defence when he got on the ice. At the end of it, it was 9-6, the Edinburgh Racers over the Nottingham Panthers. We're going to be back with more from Edinburgh in a moment. You're watching Sky Sports.